Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the highest paid doctor specialties. So these rankings will be based on the 2018 Medscape report that covered over 20,000 different physicians with over 29 different specialties, as well as the Business Insider 2018 Financial Compensation Report, which covers a few of the specialties that the Medscape report didn't cover, as well as a few that it did. So the average salary in primary care was $223,000 pre-tax for primary care physicians in 2018. This went up from the 2017 number of 217,000. Specialists made $329,000 on average in 2018 versus 316,000 in 2017. However, you have to keep in mind that there are a lot of different specialties with a wide spectrum of compensation, so the numbers probably skewed a little differently, not representative of each of the specialties in that uh, average. Fortunately, there has been a steady rise in physician incomes from, for the past several years, from about 200,000 to about 300,000, if you average all the doctors together. And this has been because of a growing population that hasn't been met with a growing number of doctors that are being produced. And so with supply and demand, and an aging population, and so with supply and demand, obviously there's going to be a high demand and not enough supply of doctors and so they're going to get paid more for their services. Interestingly, the top three specialties stayed the same as last year and the top uh, and the bottom few specialties for the lowest paid income was pretty much the same since 2013. Now for the rankings, neurosurgery made the most at 575,000 total median salary. You have to keep in mind that they do have the longest residency. Long residencies tend to correlate with higher incomes. Brain surgeons tend to have about six years of residency after medical school and um, after undergrad. They are working in very fine areas that have major consequences, so it's gonna be a high stress environment. And for the high stress and the long hours that they have to work, they are compensated heavily. Next are plastic surgeons who make about $501,000. Interestingly, the plastic surgery job outlook is continuously growing. People are getting plastic surgery done at a younger age. Older people like baby boomers are getting more surgery done. Everyone's getting more plastic surgery done and there's more and more pressures nowadays in our social media world to look better. So plastic surgeons are making tons of money because of that. Next are orthopedic surgeons coming in at $497,000. They have many years of residency as well, and they do a lot of work on like joints and things like that, and I'm guessing as the population grows older and there are more older people that have a wear and tear of their joints and need like hip replacements and knee replacements and things like that, and the population grows as well overall, there's a lot more people that need orthopedic surgeon services. Next are cardiologists who make $423,000. They make a large amount partly because of the gravity of the situation. A lot of people have heart disease and heart issues, especially as they get older and also in America where a lot of people are overweight. About fourth or fifth on ranking would be gastroenterologists. They do a lot of procedural work and so they're compensated for those things. They make about $408,000. After that are radiologists who make $401,000, dermatologists who make $392,000, and anesthesiologists who make $300,000. 186,000. Radiologists, dermatologists, and anesthesiologists are part of the road specialties and they're known for having better lifestyles and they still have high income. So while they're not at the highest end of the highest paying doctor specialties, they, they're still up there and they still give you a good lifestyle. The Business Insider report also mentioned that certain department chairs of different departments make about 465,000 which would place them at uh, in the top five as well. So if you're a department chair in another specialty, you may be able to make a similar amount as these specialties, even if you aren't in the highest paying specialties themselves. The lowest compensation was seen in public health and preventative medicine physicians who made 199,000, pediatrics who made 212,000, diabetes and uh, endocrinologists, family medicine doctors and internal medicine doctors who all make the low in the low 200,000s. And this is because in our society or our healthcare system, people aren't really co compensated for things that are more upstream like counseling and preventative health. They're more compensated for things like procedures where you're actually doing things and people have things done to them like tests and surgeries and things like that. Unfortunately, I think a lot of primary care physicians maybe deserve more relatively in for what, what they do compared to their compensation, but that's how the current like compensation system uh, works out to be. So changes in compensation. Psychiatry has gone up 16% and it actually mirrors a 30-year increase in demand. This is due to things like societal ills, the opioid crisis, uh, again, a growing population with more demands in areas like psychiatry. 
aging mental health challenges and other things like that. Plastic surgery has gone up 14%. Again, people are getting surgery, plastic surgery a lot more when they're younger and when they're older. And more people are just getting it in general to keep up with a more youthful or more attractive image. Uh, PMNR increased 13%. I'm guessing uh, PMNR's uh, physical medicine and rehab. I'm guessing perhaps Older people especially tend to, since the population is getting older and uh, larger, there is more need for rehab with older patients or people that maybe uh, go out and try to do more activity. Oncology is up 10%. I'm not sure if that's due to a rise in detection of cancer cases or maybe just more treatment of people who are older and getting ca uh, cancer at a higher rate since as you get older you're going to have more mutations and there's probably a greater risk of having different cancers. And since people are living longer, they're more likely to die of things like cancers as opposed to um, sudden traumatic experiences or more acute causes of death that they would have had at an earlier age in previous times. For US versus foreign trained doctors, interestingly, Canadian, doc Canadian trained doctors made the most. So they made $324,000 on average as opposed to US doctors who made 303,000, doctors from Mexico made 296,000, from India 292,000, and uh, it went down for other, other countries as well. For race and ethnicity versus income, Caucasians or white physicians made $308,000 on average, Asians made 293,000, Latinos made uh, 278,000, mixed race individuals made 264,000, and African Americans slash blacks made 258,000. Part of this is due to specialty differences. African Americans were more likely to choose primary care as opposed to or specializing in a field. So 60% of African Americans were specialists and 40% worked in primary care. And the rise in specialty uh, to primary care ratio went up as you went up the uh, race slash ethnicity versus income brackets. So um, while it started off at 60-40 for African Americans, for Caucasian Americans slash uh, whites, it was 73% who were specialized and just 27% who were in primary care. Besides this, there are probably other things like biases and uh, discrimination uh, in some areas. For regional differences, the highest paying area of America was North Central, so areas like Nebraska and Kansas, where they made 319,000 on average. Then the Southeast of America, which made about 309,000, and Northwest America, which made 306,000. And this is due to areas like uh, desirability of living, like people want to live in certain areas like, let's say California more, and since everyone wants to live there, uh, hospitals and organizations can pay doctors less to live there since everyone wants to live there. Uh, there's competition and physician density, so certain areas, if they have a lot of physicians there, they don't have to pay the physicians as, physicians as much since, again, supply and demand. Top earning states for doctors was Indiana, Oklahoma, Connecticut, Wisconsin, and then Nevada. So these all paid about $330,000 to $320,000 on average. The lowest earning states were the District of Columbia with, with a compensation of about 229,000, Maryland with 256,000, New Mexico 261,000, Hawaii 268,000, and Massachusetts with $275,000. And the reason for this was one competition. If there are a lot of doctors in these areas, again, doctors will get paid less due to supply and demand. A concentration of specialists, there are a lot more specialists concentrated in some of these areas. And also insurance coverage, so some insurance coverages will lead to less reimbursement rates for physicians. So employed physicians started out with more income, however self-employed physicians who had their own businesses, private practices, ended up with more income. And self-employed physicians tend to have about $50,000 more in income on average after several years as opposed to employed physicians in similar specialties. So maybe it might be best, I would assume, to start out employed, kind of learn how the system works, and then maybe move on to being self-employed. However, 69% of doctors were employed and 26% were self-employed. And this trend is further increasing towards the employed side as different governmental regulations and other kind of barriers to being a private independent physician and being self-employed are increasing as time goes on. So there were a lot of gender differences as a lot of people probably are aware of. Uh, in primary care, there was men tended to earn $239,000, whereas women earned $203,000, 
which is an 18% difference. In specialized fields, men earned about 358,000 versus women who earned 263,000, which is 36% uh, more. However, it's also important to keep in mind that besides biases, the statistics lumps all the specialties into one, and there are different prevalences of women and men in each of these specialties. So in pediatrics, women make 60%, OB-GYN 60% of the um, total physician pool, plastic surgery by 50%, public health or preventative medicine about 48%. Um, in ortho, they make the lowest prevalence at 8%, cardiology 12 gastroenterology 14%, otolaryngology 14%, radiology 15%. Unfortunately, a lot of the specialties where you earn more tends to be the specialties that women are less represented in. And for that reason, this probably skews the statistic even more. However, some of the researchers did mention that in within each of these specialties, women tended to earn less as well, uh, which is an issue that we have to uh, resolve in the future. The researchers believe that the uh, reason for the discrepancy between male and uh, female compensations was partly due to women being less assertive in asking for higher salaries and a lack of transparency in salaries so they wouldn't so they didn't know what to uh, ask for or shoot for when asking for a raise for part-time work women tend to work part-time a little bit more than men about 10 percent more women work part-time about 22 percent and men work part-time about 12 percent I'd assume this is probably due to things like outside of work or family life activities that they wanted or responsibilities that they had or that they wanted to take care of. However, the study didn't really talk about this in detail. So unfortunately, it seemed like a lot of the highest paying specialties were the ones that had the doctors that were the most likely to choose their same uh, career specialty again, which makes sense since they had more money and they likely felt more compensated for all their efforts and sacrifices and things like that. So the highest paying specialties again are going to be brain surgeons, neurosurgeons, plastic surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, cardiologists, gastroenterologist and then uh, some of the road specialties like radiology, derm, and anesthesiology. These will all pay off uh, in the lower mid to mid hundreds of thousands of dollars. However, always make sure again that you pick a specialty that really resonates with you, that is something that you really enjoy and you're passionate about, that you're happy to go in with every morning and you're able to sustain over a long career. Since longevity is so important over simply making a lot of money for a few years and then getting burnt out and Using having to use all that money to just feel better about your situation rather than enjoying the process of everything, enjoying seeing your patients, enjoying going to work every day, and also making money. Since again, a lot of the doctors I interviewed and a lot of these statistics seem to show that regardless of what specialty you go into, you're going to be making money. Maybe not as much money as you wanted to, but you'll still live a comfortable life. So. Thank you guys again for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what videos you'd like me to see next. Hit that notification bell if you haven't. Thank you so much for watching again and have a great Easter day. Take care. Also, quick shout out in this video for to Nawal for getting me these uh, couple letters here so I can actually put my full channel name up. Shout out to you, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, you guys will be seeing more of of uh, my full name now instead of my first two initials or my first two letters. Okay, take care.